Chapter 3 of Haruma Fuji's autobiography begins with a description of his first day in Japan. On September the 16th, 2000, I arrived at Kansai International Airport on Mongolian Airlines, then took the bullet train to Tokyo Station, where I was picked up by car and taken to Ajigawa Stable. It was after 9pm by the time I'd arrived. A jumbo jet and the world's fastest train in one day. It was like a dream. I'd been so excited about it the night before that I hardly slept, and when I did, it was on my feet. Inside the stable, I was greeted in loud voices by these impossibly big guys. Can you imagine how scary that was? And I was made to remember the words of my uncle, Nyamdorj, now president of Mongolian Sumo, just before my departure. He'd said to me, I'm sure you feel all merry about going to Japan, but if you take things too lightly from the start in a foreign land with a foreign language, the moment things start getting difficult, you'll want to come home. Now, from what I know about Japanese sumo, it's a harsh environment, and someone like you who can't even speak Japanese will have to work twice as hard as the others, if not more. So from the moment you open that stable door, Stop thinking about what a great country it is, and prepare your heart and mind for a tougher existence bordering on the merciless. Develop that mindset, and you can hurdle the difficulties. That mindset will be your greatest ally and saviour. Many a time did I recall those words over the course of my sumo career. That day, although stable chanko was normally served up at six, They'd taken the trouble to wait for me until after nine. Coach Ajigawa advised me on how to eat the chanko through a translator. And then, somewhat curiously, put a banana in my hand and asked me what it was. And if I tell you that's an apple, you say it's an apple. That's the nature of our coach-pupil relationship, I was told after answering. Although invited to eat some chanko, my eyes were charmed by the fruits around the pot, and soon had me reaching out for one. Oi! Those are for dessert, okay? came the stern translation, leaving me deeply unsure whether to keep or replace what I'd taken. With Mongolia having neither dessert customs nor a great supply of fresh fruit, I rather hoped I could make all these people understand how keen I was to try some. Anyway... The chanko turned out to be just lovely. Now, until the official medical comes around, the sumo newcomer is treated like a VIP. From the very next day, I found myself whisked off to various restaurants and yakiniku bars for dinner with the master. I was even taken to Tokyo Disneyland, whose attractions amazed me. You just couldn't do this kind of stuff back home in Mongolia.